Hello everyone, my name is Juliet Ambali and you're welcome back to my YouTube channel today. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for stopping by. You did not make the mistake of stopping by here. God bless you real good. And if this is not your first time, I am very, very grateful. Thank you so much for coming here time and time again. May God bless you. So I'm sure that some of you already know by now, but if you do not know, I'd like you all to meet my darling husband, my best friend, the love of my life, and so many other, he fits so many other roles in my life. So everyone meet my husband, Ola Yinka Ambali. Hello. <laughs> Say hi now. Hi. Just hi. Yeah. Hello. I'm happy to be here and thank you for always watching our channel and thank you for all the comments and feedback and all of that. Thank you for the consistency. Yes. We are grateful. May God continue to bless you. Amen. Yeah. Welcome back once again. So today I will be we will be addressing some questions that some of you asked us. Last week I put up a poll on my Instagram Insta story and on my WhatsApp status and asked that you ask us questions that you would like us to address here on YouTube. So I hope that you enjoy, I hope that you learn a thing or two and we look forward to hearing or learning from you as well concerning these things. God bless you very good. Alright, so we'll be answering the questions that you people asked us and this is the first time that he's getting to see this, the questions. So we'll go straight into it. So the first person said, there's the mindset I choose not to believe. If there is no conflict, there is no love. And I think the person is indirectly trying to say, because this is like a statement, but the person is trying to ask, that is it true that if there is no conflict, it means there is no love? Yeah, it, it is possible to, to live together without having conflict. Very so possible. Let, let me just stick to the word that the questioner has used. It's very possible to live together and not have conflict whatsoever. But if I may say this, there are some things that um, you are not going to have the same opinion. Mm -hmm. So even though you love each other yes. and you are Christian, mm -hmm. you are not going to have the same opinion on everything. everything. But what takes away conflict or what takes away or what prevents fight is that there is a spirit inside the two of you that does not seek to glorify mm -hmm. self. That's true. So that one alone, That's true. because uh, and the then you're self, about the other person. yes, this you are considered mm -hmm. self, uh, ego, and all of those things. Yes. They are out of the way. So you are not seeking to lord your opinion over the other person Very or true. to force it down his or her throat. Very true. You just want to explain that Very you true. think. It's better this way and all of that. So that, for me, is not conflict. It's just, and I think that one will always happen in any, in any marriage, uh, in any relationship. Generally, whatsoever. generally, after, generally. Even, even between us and God, we, we God will say, okay, this is what I want for you. Mm -hmm. But you, you are thinking this is better for you. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you bow to his <laughs> will. So you, that's true. You don't want to call that conflict, That's but I don't know what you actually mean by conflict. So, okay. but you are going to have different opinions on some things, and those opinions, those differing opinions, will not lead to anything called fight or near fight or serious argument mm -hmm. or whatsoever. No, it will not happen. Okay. So, concerning conflict, I think one notion that a lot of people have is that, um, like. It's normal for people to for couples to fight. Do you understand? Mm. And do you know the sad thing about this type of narrative is that when people keep saying, especially in the media, you don't know that there are different type of audience or audience. Yeah. And then there are some people who suffer domestic violence in their homes. There are some people who may have petty misunderstandings and things like that. So when somebody is saying, Oh, it's normal for people to fight, some people who um, abuse their spouses who think, oh, okay, well, it's normal, it's something, it's part of um, the lifestyle of people who are married or people, do you understand? Mm -hmm. So that kind of 
mindset is something that people should completely do away with, especially people who are believers, children okay. of God. Okay. Um, if if I may say something, okay. you, you know that that that's why it's very important that you choose what you listen to. Mm. So you, if you if whatever it is somebody is saying is not family rooted in the word, word of God, God then I don't think it is good for that, your soul. That's the truth. It's so, not good for you to listen to. <laughs> Such it's not good for you to read. It's absolutely. not good for you to pay any attention, attention to that thing because so there's not part in the bible that says it's normal for yeah. people to fight so what 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 has been happening in the mm. world is that you know over the years mm. like maybe since the beginning of the world people have been having that kind of relationship yes so because they've not gone to the source of the solution mm. to that problem mm. they feel that human beings are helpless that it's not possible for husbands and wives to live together Peace without English. fighting okay so because they have not experienced it so you would not blame them if <laughs> if they express but for you who who know the word of god who who have been taught who have experienced the genuine salvation that jesus christ has has given the world you should be able to should be able to say whether what they are doing is right or wrong. wrong and i'm not saying you should judge them but to know in your mind and then to choose to follow what god has said thank you very much this second question this person asked two questions in one so this person said hello mom so there's this thing i hear when i'm doing certain things it's always not everybody it's not always everybody that likes what you do but they will only smile with you and stuff like that how do one how does one block one's mind from allowing such things affect affect relationships with people? Do you understand? Yeah, I do. Okay, so what do you think? Now, first thing first is that there is nothing you are going to do in the world mm. that everybody is mm. going to like. Everybody around you mm. is going to like. In fact, it's been so, <laughs> so, like so but one thing you need to be sure of before you launch, before you start, yeah. is God interested in it? Has God said you should do it? So if that one is there, you are absolutely convinced and you are sure God has given you the go-ahead mm. or the mm. green light to mm. do it. Mm -hmm. So no matter what anybody says, mm. no matter how they feel, you will not have any uh, grudges mm. against them. You will mm. not... Uh, despise them, you mm -hmm. will not hate them, mm -hmm. you will not fight them, you will not see them as enemies, enemies of progress. Mm. You will love them, you, you will know that they don't understand it at that time. You know, there are people that when you are doing something at the beginning, they don't really yes. like it because you don't expect them to like it because they, they have not seen the vision that That's God true. has given you. They, they, are not, they have not experienced That's true. that yeah. vision, that yeah. thing that you have received from, from God. God yes. uh -huh. So it's, it's your thing. Mm. It's your vision. Mm. You remember how, how Moses was sometimes he was so like passionate, angry at some point that how, how is it that these people cannot see how powerful this God is too? Mm. Just be obedient and he's going to take us to the promised land because he has taken us from the bondage in Egypt up until this time, past the Red Sea, performed many miracles, fed us for 40 days and, 40, and all of that. So you need to trust God all the way. And once that is settled within your soul, no matter what anybody says, you will not hate them. You will not see Absolutely. them as enemies. And then you will just... For your head. Absolutely. I don't think I have any other thing to say concerning this. I think you've said my mind concerning this. Let's move to the next question. Okay, so this same person asks this. Secondly, someone once suggested I pipe down a little tool on some things I write, particularly the one that relates to men being domestic, that since I'm not married, men might be quite scared by my thinking pattern and won't want to come close. I want you to address this issue on all angles. I don't know how best to frame it, but it borders on pressures and the need to fit in to get a spouse. What do you think? Now, you to get a spouse, let me just take the last part. To get a spouse, mm. 
you need to get a God that will give you the spouse. So it's not the people that you want to fit into their pattern mm. that will give you the spouse mm. because <laughs> you are not going to live their life. Mm. You are going to live your own life. Mm -hmm. And who gave the, you the life? God. Jesus. Mm. So you just have to decide the person you want to please. Do you want to please God or you want to please them? Mm. So as far as what you are doing is not against God's uh, really? commandments. Oh, just ride on. You, you don't need to tone anything down. And then you, the fear that is exactly... Yeah, you, you, you are not supposed to bow to societal pressure. The, the apostles that God used to, that Jesus used to spread the gospel all over the world, they, they had a lot of challenges, people confronting them, that they were going against societal norms and mm. expectations and all of those That's things. True. If they had stopped, if mm. they had toned down, mm. if they had done what you are asking now, they, we would not have received the gospel. So true. just stick to God and look up for your spouse. Mm. Don't look at people around mm. because they are not the ones that will arrange your spouse exactly. for you. It and is as, God. And as, and as, sorry, I'm sorry for cutting. No and then when you're in the right place where God wants you to be, yeah. the person that fits you, that fits what God knows, you understand? Yeah, God will bring God that will, Exactly. So, <laughs> so it does not matter it, what... It's, it's God that will do it. It's not the people that's true uh -huh. so don't don't listen to them i can almost say, don't listen to them mm. listen to god and mm. what his word says mm. about it so when you are clear that mm. you are doing the will of god there is no sin in your life mm. because that is very important mm -hmm. when you are clear you are doing the will of god there is no sin in your life you'll be able to get your prayer through to him right. and then even if he's not answering now i mean delivering the goodies now you know that someday, very soon, he's going to provide, he's going to answer. And then everybody will come to celebrate with you. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you. On to the third question. Now this person says, as a couple, how do you manage your finances? Would you like to go first? Yeah, you go. All right. So, concerning finances, when we first got married, one of the first things we did like literally almost literally. the same week <laughs> okay literally the same week we got married was to open a joint account and it means that our mindset was that however whatever it is that we are doing in every area of our lives financially to we have a joint mind concerning money matters so for us as a couple we have joint accounts we have individual accounts and we keep record of every single thing we keep account we can tell you for the past few years when that we've been married all the things that we've been using our finances for or how we've been managing our finances and we are we are i think both of us have i'm more of the saver and he i think he has really really grown to be a saver as well right <laughs> so we, we enjoy like so i think one of the best one of the interesting things that both of us find doing is enjoying seeing opportunities whereby we can make money in positive ways and then save as well as invest investing we, we believe you can invest in um, property like that's what that was one of the first thing we did in the first year that we got married god helped us we were able to invest in a property so we we tend to save a lot more and invest more than we spend and we're really really grateful to god in that regard and we are looking forward to more growth in every area actually by the special grace of god so that's that's concerning that okay let me say something about right. that now she is the she is the accountant she is the treasurer <laughs> she is the i don't know all of the other offices in <laughs> so she's the one who who takes the record uh, keeps the account and all of those stuff she is the one who who is always warning us oh, oh you can't spend more than that you can't because i i'm okay, wait the I, thing is sorry i didn't quickly mention this yeah i don't it's not a spend down i mean in, in a frivolous way yeah. no, no 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 he's more like a giver that's the word to use he's a so, giver He's very, very compassionate. I'm compassionate too. But if somebody calls my husband and says, Ah, oh, please, I need this, I'm doing this, I don't need this. My husband is always wanting, find, looking for ways to see how to meet that person's need. Not, 
in the, I'm not saying that he's doing it in a way to um, hurt us or hurt our finances, but let's say left to him, if possible, he can, if the, the, he can give out his whole account, you get to somebody or to anybody for any cause. So that's what I mean by he's the, more of the spender and the saver, or we, and he has grown to also understand the essence or the importance. You of know, it. if I may say this, so you're saying, you're saying. I yes. wanted to say that, look, when you are single, mm. the type of life you live <laughs> is totally different from the type of life you are going to live when you get married. Mm. Um, let me just explain that. I, I'm saying that you were running your finances all alone. You were doing everything. You were able to bear the pain all alone. To enjoy all of the comforts, all of the uh, mm. profits, and everything alone, somehow, and you get to decide when and what to spend. Okay, but now that two have become one, mm. <laughs> but somehow you have another person to consider. You have to consider the other person. You have to consider your children. You have to consider the future you have to consider so many things mm. so you can't just uh, be spending the way you were spending before i don't think and then if you were not spending the right way before yes. you are going to learn how to with time yes. and with the help of god that this is how to manage your finances yes. because yes. if you don't manage your finances well you can run into serious uh, challenges That's very true. which you are going to blame yourself for so he is the one that that flags the thing, okay, it's okay, it's a little bit, just let's do like that and all of that. Which is good for us, yes. which is good, because you have to create a balance. That's true. You, the two of you cannot just... <laughs> at the end of the day, the, the children will suffer and you too, you will suffer from, from the bad decisions that you are going to make. So if somebody is asking you for 10,000 Naira, for instance, mm. and you look at your finances, you can afford 4,000, 5,000, 3,000 mm. give to the person. Mm. Uh, so, but in, in cases where you can afford the 10,000 or even more than that, you both agree that, okay, let's send it. You send it. So, and the Lord will replenish. That's right. Uh, Amen. Amen. I completely agree. I can say that for the past few years that we've been married, God has been helping us in that regard and we are deeply grateful that He has been helping us to this. A particular not prudent or I don't know he has helped us have a good structure in mm -hmm. that area and mm -hmm. are, we know that there's more room to improve and by the grace of God he will keep helping us Amen. so on to the next question this person says when spouses that are getting ready for marriage has okay I'll be correcting the grammatical errors that I say, so I can't even read that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when spouses that are getting ready for marriage have a little misunderstanding, what can one do as a wise woman? Like when the guy is not replying the lady's message and don't want to talk to her for a while, please talk about it. So. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I don't understand. Okay, like two he's people. He's not responding to your message. messages, and they are both preparing to and get married. You are preparing to get married. <sighs> That's the I, I think you should worrisome. be worried. Yes, quite worrisome. Really, because, quite you know, worrisome. but, okay, let me just start this way. Before you start getting worried, <laughs> let me say this. You have to ask yourself a yes. question. Are you sure that's the person God wants you to you. marry? You know? so, so, if, so if you are sure, mm -hmm. if you are sure, God has told you this is the person. Mm -hmm. Now, and something like that happens, mm. just know what you need to do is to pray. Don't be worried. That's true. Uh -huh. To pray. That's true. It's to pray. But if you did not get that kind of green light from God and mm. you are not sure, mm -hmm. then you will be worried, even mm. without me telling you to be worried. Mm. You will definitely be worried. That's true. <laughs> so, and then to balance, you no, know, because what of God wants us to have faith and works. So to balance praying, the work you're supposed to do is maybe you try and call someone who you can get i don't like third parties so not not like you should okay let's say you can beat your counselor the person that is in charge of church yes yeah so and let the person know that you've been trying to communicate with this person and this person has not been communicating with you so and, and, and then again you have to be honest because we don't know what led to this 
That's true. You, you were communicating just before. So and then all of a sudden that's true. the person is not responding. So, so you have to ask yourself again. Yes, something. Did I do something? And even at that, yeah, I believe it. that that person is a Christian. It's not supposed to be keeping malice. So that one is already veering towards that area. So at least let the person let you know what you have done. Yes, and do. then you know what to do. That's true. Because if at the beginning you, you started experiencing this way, then some, and then I don't understand. So when you are living together, <laughs> is he gonna like wake up? And no good morning, you're not going to pray together. You will just wake up and then get ready for office and then, and then No, you and act like you're not in that space. I don't understand. So, but I'm not trying to paint and a then, bad picture of the future. If you are but, able to go past this point, you should address this. You should not let, you know, sometimes people will just leave it and let it say, okay, well, I've gone past it, let it. It's not something that should be happening should. that you will not be talking mm -hmm. I, I i don't understand because how do you come together to get your prayer request mm -hmm. to and how do you keep making uh, plans yeah. for your so marriage, if, wedding if there is no if there is no unity there will be no revival god will not answer your prayers so that that's it remember the apostles they were to tarry mm -hmm. in, in the upper room and they, they were there in one accord and then the spirit of god came so you have to be united mm. because you are coming together to achieve something for God in life. Mm. And so if you are not united, even though you are living together, you cannot achieve that purpose. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. So this is the last question that we're going to be addressing today. Okay. I hope that I've not missed anyone. But before this question, someone said, well done. You're doing a good work. More grace. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank God you for the you. comment. God yes. bless you. So the question says, the true meaning of submission i think that's all that the person, what like what is the true meaning of submission and i'm sure the person is referring to submitting in marriage submission in marriage submission is just what the word of god puts it to be wives are to submit to husbands and husbands are to love wives just as christ loves the church and he gave his life and he gave his life for it and the thing about submission and love is not you you don't submit just because the person loves you and you don't love because the person is submitting to you it's just our own different is what we have both been assigned to do, do you understand so even though it makes it better do you understand it makes it easier to submit and as the person is loving you and love the person the person is submitting we are not told to do that as a result of what the other person is doing we are not told to do those things so sorry meaning that it's not uh based on the condition that if this person loves, loves you, me, I can then submit you, are, you, you, you submit. Yes. No, yes. you are supposed to submit in every situation. So when the Bible commands us to do something, God means that thing. And if we do it, the blessing For that it. is attached to that commandment will be ours. But if we try to change it in a way, try to put our own contribution yes, to it, then uh, uh, whatever we are practicing, we are just doing it to satisfy ourselves. So it's not going to get any blessing down to us from God. That's true. So now, what I think about submission is, well, God, there's a reason God is saying all of this. Because don't forget that the husband is a priest yes. in the home. Mm -hmm. Now, you have your pastor in the church. Mm -hmm. and You have Christ at the head of the church. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine if the pastor... It's not submitting to Christ. Mm. Imagine if the mm. pastor is instructing you in the word of God and all you just do is to just, <laughs> you, are, you are talking about your own, I'm not concerned. Mm. So imagine the husband as the priest, mm. as the head that God has appointed mm. and placed in the home. is telling the wife that, okay, this is how God wants us to do this and all of that. Mm. And then the wife saying no it's not going to happen like that this is how i feel and mm -hmm. it's going to happen you know sometimes it's not the refusal that is the major problem sometimes mm -hmm. it's how wow. sometimes you you can say oh can I uh, sorry think about I, I, it? I, I think the way you say it and then if that person that woman is somebody who is working with the spirit of okay. god who is being led by the spirit of god then there is no way that person is going to 
do things that will make the husband feel that oh this person is not submissive that's true so submission has to do a lot with respect 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 the way you respect christ as the head of the church you respect your husband not in a slavish kind of way because that's not what christ wants from us the, yes. the fear when god says that we should fear him mm -hmm. the fear is, is the fear of, like of the son to the father mm -hmm. not of a slave to the master mm -hmm. so when you are submitting you are not submitting like a slave mm -hmm. you are submitting like a partner mm -hmm. like a partner mm -hmm. but you know that god that has said is that just yes one yes god one has said that head. yes god has said that this is the person that in, in matters especially serious matters mm -hmm. that <laughs> it will take a lot of praying and all of that you have to lean and submit to whatever opinion or whatever direction the husband wants you to go because god will not deal with two leaders at the same time so if you understand so god will not deal with two leaders at the same time so he's going to deal with one and it's only through that one person that he wants to rule that family and lead that family to the purpose that he has established them and i also think that in submitting we we find safety in submitting to our spouses as women i don't know i just feel i don't know i just feel complete i just feel maybe because it's the right thing that god wants us that it's the right thing for us to do but i know that um some people have certain fears and one of the fears that they have around the world's view of submission is how some like some men don't make their wives feel safe in submitting to them do you understand mm. like some some men don't stand as covering as security as um, mm. that, that's, that's they expose why, them yeah. to different kind yeah, of yeah, that, that, that's situations so because of this thing mm. and many other things mm -hmm. that's why god commands that you should not be unevenly yoked mm. so because if you are you are eating from the same pot and i mean i mean spiritually mm. you are going to have almost the same mindset in many things mm. and then you are worshiping the same god the same way you are following the same doctrines so there is there are some things that are already limiting your husband in a certain way because the spirit of god is helping him very true to the the, the power to live above sin is already there it's not committing sin so you can be sure that there is no way god is going to lead him astray there is no way he's going to take your submission for granted that he's going to use that as okay i can just lord over her anyhow he's going to treat you like a jewel he's going to treat you like because I don't that, know. Submitting one to another. Yes, it's he's going to. He's going so to he's treat you. you as well. Yeah, he's going to treat you in a very special way, just the way God treats Treat us. So mm. he's not going to just mm. uh, because he can. He can say, okay, uh, this is how I want it. Mm. God, God does not. Many times, God does not deal with us like that. Okay. He, he then, tries to let us know exactly. sometimes that okay, this is the reason. I mean. And if we are sensitive mm. to what the Spirit is saying, we will understand that even though this thing is bitter right now, tomorrow is going to be sweet. I know that this point that you just made now, therefore, those people who are equally yoked, but in our society, in our world today, even some believers, there are some people who are faced with. I know that we've already um, stated the fact that our submitting or our loving is not based on the, mm. what the other person does. So, like, how do you. Admonish or advise women who genuinely submit to their husbands but do not get the love that their husband is supposed to give them, just like Christ. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling that if I can put that question in another way, you are asking what if, okay, this woman is married to somebody maybe before the she person became a yeah, believer and then uh, the person is not a Christian and then the, the woman and, is and saved. No, we'll get to that. Okay. And the woman is now a saved soul. Mm. Now, the Bible does not recommend that you quit that relationship, mm. number one. Mm. Number two, your responsibility now is to start praying for him mm. that Jesus will save his soul and bring him to the fold. Mm. Because 
you can no matter how whatever uh, anything a psychologist gives you to do it cannot work on you compared to what it cannot work it can't even doing. work not that compared to mm. it can't work mm. because the end of it even mm. if it seems like working mm. <laughs> it can't work because it will not lead to eternal life mm. it can't work so what you would do is to you have the responsibility now to start praying for him because you are not seeing things from the same perspective so it's going to be difficult to get your message across mm. but so you then, keep submitting yes but when when it does not go contrary to the word of god, god yes. but when it goes contrary to the word of god you are not supposed to do it yeah you're not, not no it's not saying that you're not supposed to submit though you're not supposed to do those things those, not, yes okay, yes that, that, that does not now, mean uh, yeah if, if if he says for instance that this family should do things that you know god, you god, god has said that you should you not do. do definitely you are not going to do that and, and then, it's not going to be a, god is not going to count it as sin, sin to you so 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 how do those kind of women how do they feel fine for themselves i can't explain okay that. you know so they, don't, they, so they, they, they are born again in a measure they have the spirit of god with them so the spirit of god you remember is the spirit that will comfort. teach them all truth. Mm -hmm. uh, he will teach them and, and then comfort, comfort them. Yes, right? yeah, so really, really they, they, they are in good hands. Mm. So spirit. yes, they are in good hands. They, no, there is nothing anybody can tell you that you can compare to what the Spirit of God. So mm. absolutely nothing. All right. Thank you so much. All right, so that's that for that. We've been able to answer these questions and we hope that you've learned a thing or two from the questions. Thank you so much for stopping by once again and for listening mm -hmm. to us. Yeah. Any last words? Thank you. Thank you for listening to us. And then don't, I don't think you should take our answers as the last. Uh, just consult the Bible, Bible yes. and make sure that whatever you do is in line with the word oh, of God. God. And then pray. But pray about everything yes. and God will direct your path. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Take good care of yourselves. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.